Etiology and pathogenesis is complicated, but to keep it simple, there are two factors which both of them need to be there. The first factor which needs to be there is there should be a predisposition of the child, of the individual to develop allergic rhinitis. In other words, the child should have a, we use the word atopic diastasis. Atopic diastasis means the child has a propensity, tendency, genetic predisposition hai, the child will develop allergies. Second, there should be exposure and sensitization. Both are important. Exposure and sensitization to specific allergens. Exposure and sensitization to specific allergens. Both of them, if they are present, predisposition with, they both have, the child has a high likelihood of developing allergic rhinitis. Please also understand that children who have intermittent symptoms, the allergic rhinitis is usually caused by exposure to exogenous allergens. Exogenous allergens. For example, pollens. So, they will have seasonal onset of symptoms. Whereas, children who have persistent symptoms, usually it is found that the allergens are endogenous or internal environment based. That is, they will be caused by cockroaches, they will be caused by rats, mice, mites, dust, these uh, danders, cats and dogs, ke upar jo, there, there are small, you know, lice, sticks and mites, exposure to those, those will be responsible for persistent allergic rhinitis. And whether it is intermittent or persistent, most of them are caused by inhaled allergens. So, inhaled allergens are implicated in all patients of allergic rhinitis, right? Now, what is the pathogenesis? Before we go to pathogenesis, you need to understand that there are three distinct parts of the disease process. The first part is sensitization. Sensitization tends to occur quite early in life. Most of the sensitization happens in infancy and that is why exposure to allergens, exposure to smoking should be avoided in the infancy period. After sensitization has happened, starting from, you know, uh, late infancy till 5, 6 or 7 years of age, you will have the actual disease manifesting. In every acute attack, you will find that there will be first phase, what you will call as early phase of symptoms. There will be few hours later, the delayed phase of symptoms. After these uh, symptoms will be over by medication or spontaneously, there will be a low-grade chronic inflammatory state where mast cells will be still present. They will be ready. Unle whenever there will be an exposure to allergen, again an attack will be precipitated. So, to talk more technically about it, let us look at this flowchart. This flowchart, I have tried to explain how allergy sensitization happens. Allergy sensitization, the point to remember is, it happens in early life. When I say early life, 80% of sensitizations tend to happen between 0 to 12 months of age, 0 to 12 months, right? So, there is antigen exposure which leads to antigen present presenting cells like macrophages. They process the antigens into peptides. These peptides are presented by antigen presenting cells to the helper T cells. Helper T cells produce two types of interleukin, interleukin 3 and interleukin 4. These two interleukins stimulate the B cells to form plasma cells which are producing IgE and this IgE it coats the mast cells in the nasal mucosa and basophils in the plasma. In other words, IgE is now ready to cause inflammation. It is now coating the mast cells. That process is called as allergic sensitization. So, what is allergic sensitization? If I have to say in two words, it is initial first exposure to allergen which leads to production of IgE antibodies and these antibodies coat the mast cells and basophils. If you don't want to remember the entire flowchart, this is the summary of what you need to remember, right? This is sensitization. After sensitization, we come to an acute attack. Now, sensitized per patient gets exposure to allergen. So, what happens? There are two phases of illness. First is the early or primary phase which tends to occur within 5 to 15 minutes. 
and then we have the late or secondary phase which occurs 4 to 8 hours later. So first is early phase, there is antigen exposure. Now what happens is IgE is already present on the mast cells. This antigen will bind to IgE and act as a bridging structure. Like try to understand, this is one mast cell, this is another mast cell and this is the third mast cell, right? They all were having this IgE antibody on their surface. But individually, they are not joined with each other. Now you have allergen coming in. Now this allergen comes and this allergen binds to all the three. So what it will do is, it will produce a bridge between these three. As soon as this bridging effect, this is called as, this effect Nelson also uses it, some other textbooks also use it, it is called as bridging effect. This bridging effect leads to mast cell degranulation. This will, all these mast cells will degranulate and the, you know that they have preformed mediators like histamine, serotonin, prostaglandins, they will be released. Plus, there will be newly formed mediators like leukotrienes, we call them as cystinyl leukotrienes, prostaglandin 2 and some serotonin sometimes is also freshly produced, they all will be released. That will, that will produce the initial part of rhinitis, what you call as early phase. 4 to 8 hours later, you will have the secondary phase. Due to these mediators which have been released, there will be recruitment of the inflammatory cells like basophil, eosinophil, neutrophil, mast cells and mononuclear cells. They will come and produce even more mediators and now specific mediators will be produced. Like eosinophil will produce peroxidase, cationic proteins, GM-CSF, interleukin-4, 5, 3, 13 and all these will ha help to amplify the reaction leading to the development of allergic rhinitis. There will be mucus gland stimulation causing rhinorrhea. There will be sensory stimulation causing sneezing and itching. There will be vasodilatation causing congestion and pressure. There will be increased vascular permeability which will cause tissue edema or local mucosal edema. This is how, this is the complex pathogenesis. The best way it can be explained based upon Nelson, based upon two other review articles that I have combined at one place. So, just like I told you in the previous slide, what are the key points to remember for your entrance exam? This is a complete process, but the key point to remember is, I will give a simplistic description. Sensitization ka simple description I have given you. Now, the simplistic description is, there will be two types of reactions. There will be early reaction and there will be a late reaction. Early will happen, it begins at 5 minutes and is most prominent at 15 minutes. So, we give the range 5 to 15 minutes. Late will occur 4 to 8 hours after the early reaction. In early reaction, there will be IgE combining with the allergen. This IgE which is present on mast cell surface, this will cause mast cell degranulation. Right? This mast cell degranulation will release the mediators. These mediators will produce late reaction. Late reaction will be characterized by, because of the effect of these mediators, there will be recruitment of inflammatory cells and they will come to lie, they will infiltrate in the nasal mucosa. These inflammatory cells will produce even more mediators and they will produce local changes, local inflammation. The combination of these will produce symptoms of allergic rhinitis, right? So, this is a simplistic version of what you need to remember. Now, Nelson also says that repeated exposure to intranasal allergens causes a thing called as priming. What is priming? More brisk response is seen even with a less provocation. So, if there is very repeated exposure to allergen, even a small amount of allergen will precipitate the reaction. Increased submucosal mast cells, they have a role in both the early phase allergic response as well as in sustaining the chronic allergic disease. We, we find that chronic allergic disease is produced by because of these low-grade inflammation is produced by these submucosal mast cells which are long-lasting, coated with IgE antibody and they are always in a ready state to produce the early reaction. And their persistence, their number in children with allergic rhinitis is always elevated compared to normal children. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from PrepLadder.